Hi, welcome and welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Do you wrestle with rumination? Are you replaying or rehashing or revisiting a traumatic event or some other type of situation or relationship over and over again? Even if it's in your mind or you may be actually talking to yourself or hashing it out with someone else who has agreed to listen and give you kind of a sounding board. Rumination can be one of the most difficult aspects of a narcissistically abusive relationship and it can be really hard to make it make sense or to resolve things uh, even for yourself, even in your own mind. And I thought of five things to consider after narcissistic abuse when it comes to rumination. You might be able to think of some others. Uh, it's not an exhaustive list by any means, but drop them in the comments below. It may help someone else. And then I've got a few questions that may lead you to some truths that can help you to combat the temptation to ruminate. One thing to consider is that the way that the narcissist treated you in the narcissistically abusive relationship has nothing to do with you and more to do with how they feel about themselves. Also, them acting out based on their home training or lack thereof and also possibly childhood trauma. Doesn't have to be, but could be. And conversely, your interactions with the narcissist in the context of the relationship are often tied to your upbringing and the way that you were programmed and conditioned uh, from childhood on and childhood trauma that you might have experienced growing up. The sooner that you realize that the way that you were treated or dealt with or spoken to has nothing to do with you, then you'll be on your way to healing and dealing with things and recovering and moving forward with your life in a more positive way. A second thing to consider is that there's really not a lot of substance there or there's really not a whole lot of value there. And secretly, you were the valuable one in the relationship. The narcissist likely enticed you with a lot of deceit and a lot of dust. And there's really not a whole lot there. And they were looking to you to do the heavy lifting in the relationship in terms of propping up their esteem, making them feel better, uh, maybe even providing them with an escape from things that they've been through in terms of maybe adverse childhood experiences that they've carried forward into adulthood or just fallout from failed relationships and other failures in life that they just don't really want to deal with or can't deal with. And you were supposed to provide them with the propping up that they needed to be able to carry on because for whatever reason, they don't feel like they can do that on their own. A third thing to consider is that if you were discarded by the narcissist, that there's no closure for you. And in a lot of ways, the narcissist likes it that way because it may prompt you to reach out to them to try to get answers or maybe to vent your anger or frustration with them, which is an emotional reaction, which makes them feel powerful and gives them a sense of control in the situation. And something to think about is what does closure look like for you? The narcissist is more than likely not going to give closure. They may not even be able to articulate why they said or did the things that they did within the context of the relationship. A fourth thing to consider is that if you disconnected from the narcissist first before they had an opportunity to discard you, that 
there's not a lot of closure in that either. It's kind of a sacrifice of closure in a way. Not that you would necessarily get closure from the narcissist, but you're even, you're by disconnecting, you're removing yourself from the situation before you even have a chance to really explore that. And that can leave you ruminating and rehashing things like, okay, what did I miss? How did I not see this? You know, why would they lie? What was that all about? Why did they do this? Does anybody else see this? All kinds of things. A fifth thing to consider when it comes to narcissistically abusive relationships and rumination is that narcissists ruminate too. And you may not get to have a front row seat and watch them ruminate, but you've probably gotten a sense of them ruminating, say in the form of hoovering attempts. If the narcissist is blowing up your phone from all kinds of different burner numbers or Google numbers and all different kinds of area codes and trying to get a hold of you or emailing you or trying to uh, proposition you with uh, new opportunities or offers uh, behind a, an alias or some other identity that they've created or fake account, then you might get a sense of their struggles with rumination. I think the hoovering alone says a lot about the narcissist ruminating, the attempts to sabotage uh, you or others that they have dealt with by trying to get them fired from their jobs or trying to put them in a bad light on their jobs or trying to withhold information, possessions, or you know, answers to questions that you might have. I, a lot of times they don't even know the answers to the questions as to why they do what they do. They know that what they're doing is not okay and that it's socially inappropriate and unacceptable to a lot of people, and they're gonna try to get away with whatever they can get away with, but they know that it's not right. They know that they're lying, they know that they are being abusive, they know that they are using you for you know whatever their needs are, and that they are withholding valuable information that would prevent you from being able to make an informed decision to exit the relationship if you really knew who and what you were dealing with. And that's not okay, but narcissists do ruminate too. Whether or not you're going to expose them or what you're gonna do next or what you're doing or, or even FOMO, what they're missing out on by not being connected to you anymore. That's a big one because at the end of the day, the narcissist targeted you in a lot of ways and hooked you into the relationship a lot of time with lies and with a false image in order to get needs met that they have depending on their stability or status or their ability to pivot uh, and regroup and adjust and adapt quickly and move on to something else or find another person to latch on to to meet their needs, that could be a problem. The narcissist is in a tailspin and panicking and desperate and going over a lot of things in their mind as well especially if they're more of a con artist scammer type where they're kind of doing this for a living. This is their livelihood. They're definitely going to want to know like, okay, well, where did I mess up? Because their livelihood depends on it in a lot of ways. Well, where did I go wrong? What, did, what gave me away? Who gave me away? What's everybody saying? You know, what's everybody going to do? Is anybody coming after me? What's gonna happen next? And they're fearful, they're cowards, they're panicking. They're not gonna let you see that, but they'll walk it out somewhere else and they'll, they'll air it out 
and walk it out in other ways. Could be behind fake accounts, maybe even in the comments section here on YouTube, but they're gonna air out, they may talk to their enablers and try to play victim, or they may go on a fishing expedition and try to poke and prod and try to test and try to see if they can get you to, to come forward with some kind of intel or they'll scour your social media, look and see if they can find some answers to some of the questions that are burning in them. A few questions that I thought of for you to consider after narcissistic abuse when it comes to rumination are, what are your needs? And not just as far as the narcissist is concerned because I think it's fair to say that the narcissist is not going to be able to meet your needs and their intention was never to meet your needs. Their intention was to get their needs met. What are your needs like on a deeper level? Is it companionship? Is it like a, a fear of loneliness? Is there a void uh, in your life that you feel like you need to fill? that maybe the narcissist said something or did something or offered something, maybe in the form of future faking that fit the bill and led to you engaging them in a relationship of some kind, regardless of the nature of it. Along with that, a second question to consider is what prompted you to let them in? Was it something that they said? Was it something that they did? Did they remind you of someone or did they remind you of a situation or did something that they offer kind of resonate with you in some kind of way. And a third thing to consider is what can you do to vet people more effectively? And I think the sooner that you're able to really ponder these questions, maybe even journal about them and come up with answers to them it'll help you to more quickly identify people who are targeting you specifically with ulterior motives so that you can weed out those types of individuals and avoid those types of relationships going forward. Narcissistically abusive relationships can really leave you ruminating, especially when the relationship has ended, either through a discard by the narcissist or you disconnecting from the narcissist. Rumination can be very difficult and it can be hard to break that cycle of just rehashing, reliving, revisiting, and replaying things in the relationship, things that were said, things that were done, things that happened, you know, aspects that were painful, either physically, emotionally, psychologically. If the narcissist has passed away, you may really be left in a situation where you don't have answers and you have no way to get them. Or if the narcissist is someone that you are not really tied to uh, relationally and have no reason to be tied to and have no reason to interact with ever in the future, then that can be kind of a cliffhanger as well. These are trying times that we're living in. And one way or another, people are going to try you. You need to more than ever know that you're not alone and you're not crazy. Know who you're dealing with, know who you are. Take care, take care of yourself, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.